Today we're going to walk through all the steps to set up VS Code so you can compile Marlin 2.0 firmware. A while back I did a video on Marlin 2.0 firmware. That's the version that supports 32-bit boards. I showed you how to get everything set up, compile it, get it loaded on your SD card, and get everything working. Well, in that video we were using the Atom editor. And a few things have changed with Atom and Platform I.O. and they're going in a different direction. And if you're using Atom right now, you might have seen this warning message. Basically all it's telling you is Platform I.O. going forward, the preferred editor is going to be VS Code. Atom does still work, but we should probably try to use VS Code going forward if that's the direction that Platform I.O. is going in. And after talking with a couple of the community members, I realized that maybe it's not as straightforward getting VS Code set up to compile Marlin as it should be. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to walk through all the steps to get set up on VS Code, get your Marlin compiled, we'll load it on a 32-bit board, and we'll do the 8-bit version just for fun. You can do either one with VS Code, it doesn't matter, they both work the same. So, let's head to the computer and get all this set up. And here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab Visual Studio Code, so we'll open up a browser. All the links that I use will be in the description below as usual. You can just head to code.visualstudio.com and we'll just hit download for Windows. Downloads complete. We'll just click on the execute to start the install. We'll accept. Next. Locations fine. Next. Start menu folder. Next. The only one that I want is this add path. That's going to add it to environment variables. So we'll just leave that ticked and hit next. We'll hit install. Install is complete. We can go ahead and launch it. Hit finish. And here's Visual Studio Code. So we still have to use Platform I.O. as our IDE compiler to compile Marlin. So we're still going to have to add that even though we're using Visual Code. The easiest way to do that is to come over here to Extensions. And then you can search for Platform I.O. And we want this top one, Platform I.O. IDE. We'll hit Install. While that's installing, let's go out and grab a copy of Marlin. So we'll head to marlinfw.org. We'll go to Downloads. And we're going to grab Marlin 2.0. Let's head to Downloads and let's extract that. We'll right click Extract All and let's call it Marlin 2.0 VS for Visual Studio. We'll hit Extract. So now we have our Marlin version that we need. We can go ahead and close these. Go back into Visual Studio. The Platform I.O. install is complete and you can get to Platform I.O. right here over on the left with this alien icon. So now we need to open up our Marlin project in Platform I.O. so we can compile it. So let's import Arduino project. We'll go to our downloads folder. We'll click into this VS folder that we created when we extracted it. And we'll select the underlying Marlin folder, this one here. And then we need to select a board. Marlin by default still uses ramps, so that's a Mega 2560. So in this pull down up here, we'll go with the Mega 2560. And then we'll hit import. Now our project has been loaded. We can open up the configuration.h file. This is where you make your config changes, but I recommend not changing anything until you build it once. We want to build it and make sure it's going to work. Also, if you open up this platformio.ini file, you can see the default environment is Mega2560. That's what it's going to be set to default in Marlin anyway, but just note that this is the default for now. So back to configuration.h. Down here, you notice you have all the commands that you can run for platformio. The check mark is build, but you can also go to your platformio button over here on the left, and it's going to give you all the options that you can run for this project. So either way will work, but if you come up here and click build, down here in the terminal it's going to run through and build your project. When the building is done, you can scroll back up a bit, and you'll see Mega2560 success, 47 seconds. So we know the software compiles successfully. So we've already got VS Code installed and Platform I.O., and we can compile Marlin. Now there are a couple of different ways to do this. I think it's just easier to go grab the Marlin firmware and do it just like this, but you could clone a Git project if you'd like. You could take the Git link, you might need the Git version for Windows to get some of this stuff done, but you can take that link from GitHub or another repository, put it in here, and it will pull in the updated files for you. Again, I think it's just as easy to go get the firmware, but that's another option that you have. So we know ramps works, let's actually try to load this on a board. So let's go try the INC board. So we'll scroll down a little bit. Here's your motherboard configuration. If you need to see what the lists of boards are like, we can come up here, go back to Explorer, and we'll open up the boards file. Boards is in source, core, and then just open up boards. These are all the boards that Marlin 2.0 currently supports. 
We can scroll down a bit and we'll grab board INC Rambo, this one right here. Let's just copy that and we'll head back to configuration.h and we'll just paste that right in here. Now there is a different library for the INT Rambo and the Mini Rambo other than the one that Ramps uses, so we're going to need that. But with Platform I.O. on VS Code, that makes it pretty easy. So let's go ahead and cable up our INT board USB. Remember, Ultima Machine boards, you do have to power them up to be able to talk to them USB. You can't just power them with that 5 volt. So we only made one change, and that's for the INT board. But we do need to compile for that INT board. So let's go ahead and save our configuration.h. We'll go to File, Save. And then we'll head back to Platform I.O. And up here in Project Tasks, if you scroll through, it's going to have all of your environment variables pre-made for all the boards that Marlin supports. So we can come down, expand Rambo, and we'll hit build from there. That will allow us to use the Rambo libraries. And when we tried to compile the INC, we got some errors because of the drivers weren't set. So we can set that really quick just to get it loaded. So we'll scroll down a bit, and we have the driver section, and we'll uncomment these for X, Y, Z, and E. And we'll change all these A4988s to TMC2130. Now that that change is made, we can go ahead and save. And under Rambo, we'll hit build again. Any extra libraries that it might need to be able to build for LCD screens or other things, it's going to go ahead and install them as it builds. Build is complete. We'll scroll back up a bit. Rambo build successful. And now we can go ahead and upload that build. So back over here, environment Rambo, we'll just hit upload. Most of the time, if you're plugged in USB, it's going to be able to find that board, especially on 8-bit boards, I've noticed, and it's going to go ahead and flash that chip. So there's an 8-bit board. Let's go ahead and do a 32-bit board as well. We're going to do the SKR 1.3. So we can just comment these drivers out for now. Let's go back to our Explorer, and we can go back over here to our Boards file and get the name of the board that we want to compile. And we want the Big Tree SKR version 1.3. We'll just copy this. Back to configuration.h. Scroll back up to the board config. We'll paste over our INC Rambo for our SKR. And then over here in our environments, we can just close our Rambo. The SKR is an LPC 1768, so we can expand that one. We can go ahead and hit build. And the build was successful. Now, if you've never loaded Marlin on your SKR board before onto that SD card, the easiest way to get this done is just to take the SD card off the board and load it on your computer. The SD card is on. You can see the firmware current file. You can either delete that or leave it there. That's fine. It doesn't matter. We can go back to VS Code. And up here in the project task, we can go ahead and hit Upload. It should find your SD card just fine. Mine was the E drive. And it uploaded it. Now if we take a look at that card again, you're going to have your bin file and your current file. The bin file is going to get loaded as soon as you mount it on your board and reboot it. So we'll move the SD card, put it back on the board, and we'll restart the board. Now that you have a valid configuration on your board, you can see your board as a drive letter. So our new board is on H. Now going forward when you build from VS Code, now that you have a valid configuration and you don't get anything too messed up in there, you can just upload from here. So back to VS Code, if you just hit upload again, it finds your board as a drive, and it re-uploads it automatically. Now, if you want to grab that bin file that's been generated by this compile and load it on the SD card manually, or maybe send it to somebody else so they can load it, you can do that as well. We'll go back to Explorer, go to PIO, Build, LPC 1768, and this is your current firmware bin file right here. You can copy that and paste it wherever you like, or put it on the SD card to load it manually. And that should be all you need to know to get up and running with VS Code and compiling Marlin. So there you go. That's how you can use VS Code to compile Marlin firmware and get it uploaded on your main board. Of course, you're going to have to tweak some of the configuration files to get everything working correctly for your 3D printer, but this should get you started in the right direction on how to use VS Code versus Atom. I hope you liked this video or you found it helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.